ending is very easy download. So from from about here onwards, you can bend the pitch wildly. So about about a third, possibly even a, a perfect fourth. No, not not a perfect fourth, but a, for the a lot of space. To only for the low notes, you can be extremely flexible. Yes, the lower you go, the more flexible it gets. For the pitch bending, I see. Yes, for pitch wow. bending. That was a fourth. <laughs> Bending and scooping in and out of a note, so. A bit easier lower than it is uh, up high. But that is, um, that is the idea of a uh, bend. A glissando, if, if you want to use the hand in the context of a glissando, is actually quite effective. But you have to be aware that the interval has to be very small, so... And so on and so forth. So, so the glissando, I'm guessing it's best. I'm guessing the glissando is best for the harmonic series. Like if you are talking about uh, the the you know the starting note, ending note in the harmonic series, and mm, um, well, when when composers write simply two notes and a line or wavy line in between and write glissando, again, this is one of those areas where the horn player decides between one of two different techniques to use. So there is, um, what you mentioned would be <coughs> the harmonic bliss, which is basically I stay on one fingering or one tube length, if you wish to think of it that way, and I just gliss up through the harmonic series. So. This is uh, one of two techniques. I could also go... That would be a little bit more secure, but still within the context of being a harmonic gliss. So the idea is I'm using the different notes of the harmonic series to gliss. Another, um, again, harmonic series gliss, but this time um, it is something that many people, many uh, horn players would use if they see glissando, would be to use 1, 2, 3 on the F1, which is the um, B natural horn. The reason why one, two, three is because this is the longest possible tube. You're going to get the most possible notes in between. So, so really, you have a lot of notes in between. Basically, all depressed. All the all de all the vowels depressed. Okay. Uh, not not the thumb vowel because I want the F horn. I want the B. I want the one, two, three on the F horn, which is the B natural horn. So, okay. really have a lot of notes in between. There's one of, harmonic bliss is one of two ways to do a bliss. The other, which um, again... Wait, so, sorry, I'm sorry. So the three, when you press the three vowels, it's the longest range. This is the longest tube. Okay, okay, so that what, makes sense. What, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. What, what happens when I press So you have a longer lip distance. Uh, I mean like a... So the longest tube, so the harmonics, is yeah. I'm much higher in the relative in the harmonic series relative to shorter tubes, for example. But versus the shortest tube that I have. Wow, That's, okay, okay. Yeah. It's a big difference. It's nearly an entire octave apart, the, 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 the two tubes. But, okay, so um, that's one of the two uh, techniques of glissing. The other would be simply a valve flat to gliss. So wow. I'm, I'm not I'm not using um, I'm not confining myself to one harmonic series. I'm I'm literally just fluttering the valves as I go. Up. And yeah. Cool. <laughs> 
this um it sounds it sounds like the fing the finger one is very secure. Like Yes. It's very confident. Yeah. Yes. Well, that may be that may be just me because when I see Gliss, that's what I do by default. Okay. Some okay. people will will choose for harmonic Gliss. I see. Uh, yeah. What about downward, uh, downwards versus upwards? Is there any um, issues no. to take note of? No, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any issues with uh, glissing downwards. I think the, the, the more worrying issue is where in the tessitura you put the glissando. If you were to ask for glissando in the low range, that would be very difficult because I do not have the, the, the necessary uh, harmonics to get through it, even if I was using a bow flutter, so... Still quite doable. So, just because the harmonics are much f further apart, all the way down there, it gets more difficult. If you wanted uh, a real glissando effect in the low register, it Possibly it would be more effective just to write a chromatic scale downward, so... That's about as fast as I can get it, but... I would, I would think that would be more effective than writing a downwards glitch in the low register. In the high register, downwards glitch, absolutely no, no problem. Middle and up... Mid middle, what about middle? Middle, no problem. Okay. Could be a problem, and upwards as well. Oh, Basically, okay. Gliss glissing in the low register is so maybe the issue. player will do a chromatic scale Probably or something. Probably would do a chromatic scale rather I than see. A, a true gliss. It's while we're on that, the chromatic scale on the French horn is no problem. Like that's that's the that's down to the ability of the player. Okay. Of course, there there will be a limit, but we're we're talking about limits that are okay. Seri seriously very fast. Is um. Chromatics on a French one is just a matter of finger finger speed really. Okay, good. Another way way to gliss, which is to simply remove the hand out of the bell. This is um, right right in the realm of extended technique. Without the hand and the bell, the, the horn bell is designed to function with the hand and the bell. Without the hand, the acoustic wave doesn't really know where the end of the bell is. So it doesn't really latch onto any note, especially in the upper register. So would be the closest you can possibly get on the horn to a, to a true portamento but that is a very limited range it's basically just just that just a little area there where you get this true sliding yeah. sliding effect as well as uh, half valve you can also gliss via using uh, half valve techniques of course um, Half valve is, is is its own um, is its own technique, but I'd just like to point out that by using half valve, it's so cool. Okay. Yeah, it's um probably closer to a true fundamental than than the hand up the that I just I just uh, demonstrated. So But it's a limited register. It's only the high notes, right? For the hand out of the bell it's only the high notes. Half valve half valve is, is a it's a very it's a it is a hit and miss thing because you have to, you have to really gauge just how much you want to the pressure. Oh okay. <laughs> And, and, and there I, I had a bit of So basically if you press it slightly more or slightly less I mean it wouldn't be wise for, for us to notate exactly the note that we want or 
No, I I would not take approximate pictures. Just just a X and then a wavy line that's to the shape of the glissando that you want. That, that sort of thing. Mm, Tones I mean. on the horn is really absolutely no problem at all. All you need is a quarter tone fingering chart, which I'm going to look at right now because this is not something that most horn players practice. So it's in the book that you. Yes, it is. Recommend. Okay. Yes, it is. So basically. These are fingered quarter tones. Yes. Okay. As opposed to as opposed to bending the pitch. With the horn, this is very possible because we have access to these out of tune sevens and eleventh harmonics and so on. But in a context context of uh, quarter tones, we can certainly use them to our advantage. So. <sighs> So somebody and actually figure out all the fingering. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> if if you if you have a good uh, idea of your harmonic series and what the valves do is actually not difficult to figure Was out. Was there any yourself. half depression or whatever? Mm. No. Okay. Absolutely not. These are all full, uh, fully depressed, and it is available to me from from where I started all the way up to uh, top C C six. Cool. The entire range you have quarter tones there. Again, and they can be quite played reasonably fast, right? You don't have to the sound the the, the 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 attack. I mean, like the how fast do you get it? The response. As fast as a regular note. Okay, good. You can, you can write running running notes with uh with quarter tones. Low tonguing, how fast? Um, yeah, low notes are they a jaw? Low notes are not. Agile at all. When it comes to double tonguing, triple tonguing, the limit to speed is really the player. So. Um, Sounds very down, fast to me. <laughs> down, down low, you're not going to get that fast. Even, even if your tongue can do that, the instrument is not going to respond fast yeah, enough for you to yeah. do it. sooner or later you reach a point where you don't hear any pitch all you hear is the tongue because the instrument is not responding fast enough to give you the pitch all, all he can all he can project for you is the sound of your tongue you were changing the notes but yes the i don't think the pitch changed yeah it, it just just got into a more more and more percussive pitch so. a change in pitch very subtle because most most of what you hear is a percussive very percussive effect yes very cool effect i must there, there's it, use it for is, that it is very useful I, I would say actually uh middle register when, high register is all great right no problem when people say um the low register is not agile on the horn what what they really mean is in the traditional sense where you wouldn't write a, a very um, flourished melody all the way down there, yes, it's, it's not agile because the notes don't speak fast enough for you to hear that pitch. But in the context of just wanting a very percussive effect, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Quarter tongue, no problem at all. And you, were, you also mentioned split tongue growl. Yes. <laughs> Any problem with low lower notes? I would imagine there should be problems. And that's about it for me. Very cool. Be beyond that, the I think the issue is that the vibrating frequency of the instrument is too close to the vibrating frequency of the tongue. So. 
yeah, it's a very weird clash and the instrument doesn't know where to resonate. So that would be the issue. Up high, theoretically, you can get as high as you like. It's again down to endurance because yeah. with flutter tongue, you're really cutting out a lot of the air that would otherwise be going into the instrument. So that does affect how high you can get. And that's about it. <laughs> split tongue, split tongue attack. This is actually, although there's a pitch, I would not write uh, definite pitches for this because it is very difficult to con control the pitch. It's quite simply just. So, very. Um, Wait, you s split or spit? Split. Split, split tongue. It is, it is actually split, even though the action I'm using is if, if effectively spitting into the instrument. So, um, although there's a pitch, you can't, you can't really control it other than approximate high, quite high, middle, that sort of thing. So I, I would, if you want a split tongue attack, just write approximate pitches, a, a sort of contour, that sort of thing. So. And also don't, don't do it too fast because that's about, that's about as fast as I can do it. A and growl, a growl would be... Whatever. It's a very violent, very violent, very effect. cool, and not, uh, not easy. Quite tiring as well. So don't, don't, don't torture, don't, don't torture, don't it. overuse it. It's basically I'm literally just growling while while playing. Okay. Uh, sub pitch. Kissing to oh, that's like what I wrote. I think I wrote a uh, kiss, smack, whatever, kiss. Yes, yes. yes.